Hey guys, Tammy here. And in this video, I'm going to talk about, can you mediate with a narcissist? Now, again, another question I get a lot. I know I've been saying that a lot lately, seems like, and uh, that's where this content comes from a lot of times is questions you guys have and whatnot. So um, if you have something you would like to hear me talk about, feel free to comment on this video and let me know what you'd like to see a video on. I will try to do that for you. But today we're going to talk about, can you mediate with a narcissist? And I think when people go into that situation and they're dealing with somebody that's very manipulative, their main concern is that the person is going to manipulate the process, right? And they're going to be at a disadvantage. I think that's usually the big fear. So we're going to talk about how to deal with that. I'm going to maybe give you some other perspectives on some advantages and disadvantages of the mediation process when it comes to dealing with a narcissist in particular. Before we do that, if you like this content, don't forget to hit like on this video and also subscribe to the channel so that you get notified as new videos are released. And as always, please feel free to share this on your social media so that we can help as many people as possible. Now, when you go into a mediation with a narcissist, I have so many people say, oh, well, well, well we can't mediate. Like this person's a narcissist. There's no way. Actually, it's not true. I actually find that the courtroom is a, an easier environment for them to manipulate because the court, the judge, when I say the court, I'm talking about the judge. The judge doesn't have the ability to really dig into the details of your situation and observe this person for long periods of time, um, talk to them, interact with them. The court's actually, you know, trying to make a very quick decision based on kind of what what all they can absorb while you're in front of them, right? And the mediation process, usually that mediator will have more time to kind of dig in. And look, whether the person's a narcissist or not, in, in some ways it doesn't really matter for the purposes of mediation. What we're trying to do is advocate for the agreement. So that's really the perspective the mediator's coming from. I have never been in a situation where and I've done, I've, Thomas and I did over, I think over 500 mediations together. So I've been the mediator in a large, large number of cases, but I don't think I've ever been in a situation where something that one of the parties said caused me to go, oh yeah, I'm going to try to push in their direction because of that. We're trying to reach agreement. I will say that it is important that if you feel like the other person is a narcissist, it is important that you go into the mediation process being able to hold your ground, right? You can't still be in that people pleasing, you know, doing everything for them kind of mode. Or if you're still, you know, wanting the relationship, sometimes people are in that mode. And so they're like trying to give in an effort to um, win that person back over. Things of that nature can work against you. So I think it's important to at least talk to somebody, have some advocacy before going into the process. I don't think you necessarily need to have an attorney participate with you, although sometimes people do that. They'll both have attorneys present with the mediator. I actually think mediation is most effective when it's just the parties, but it is important that you kind of strategize with somebody ahead of time and make sure that you kind of know what you're going in with, what, um, you know, kind of what you want out of it and being able to get something reasonably within that while knowing that the idea is to cooperate, but the idea is not to sort of give away the kitchen sink, right? And do everything the other person wants and not get anything you want out of it in return. And the nice thing about mediation is you're never required to agree. So if you go in and it doesn't go well or doesn't go the way you think or the way you want, then you just leave and you didn't accomplish anything, unfortunately. But you've at least tried. And I find that if you do end up going to trial or going in front of the court, the fact that you attempted mediation um, usually will make your judge happy. And also, I think that if you can go into mediation and you can actually settle your case, that's great. If you go into mediation and you get settlement on part of your case, that's great. Either of those circumstances, you saved yourself a ton of time, money, stress, all of those things. 
if you go in and you don't settle, I mean, does it stink that you wasted, you know, the money and you didn't reach settlement? It does, but it also kind of tells you, it gives you information, right? Either way, you kind of know what that other person's wanting, what they're asking for, what their expectations are. And the other thing I always say is like, look, if you end up in court and you go or you go to trial on your case, that is so much money that the little amount you spent is in mediation is going to be nothing compared to the cost of a trial. And 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 on the flip side, if the mediation actually works and you settle, you've saved a ton of money. So there's relatively little financial risk and potential huge financial gain. Okay, so that's one of the things that we want to keep in mind. When you go into this with somebody who's a narcissist, you know, the key things to me are really like learning how to negotiate, right? So that you can advocate for yourself. And then also making sure you have a good mediator. Don't just get online and pick the first name that pops up, right? You want to talk to that person. And I'm not saying they have to have all kinds of letters behind their name. I don't think that you necessarily, you know, a lot of attorneys are mediators, a lot of retired judges are mediators. I don't think that you necessarily have to have somebody of that caliber. Um, It kind of depends on your situation, your finance, financial situation. But what you really need is somebody that's seasoned at dealing with high conflict people because The way that you conduct a a negotiation when you're dealing with a high conflict person can be very different than a negotiation that you're conducting with to people who don't have high conflict personalities, right? It's, It's very, very different. And so you need to be equipped and understand how you need to negotiate with your ex if they're narcissistic, but you also need a mediator that understands that dynamic. Okay. And, and I don't think that that necessarily means that you call them up and say, Hey, you know, do you know how to mediate with a narcissist? You know, you don't say things like that. You use words like, you know, we, as mediators, we tend to refer to narcissist as a high conflict personality, right? And there's several different types of high conflict personalities, narcissist just being one of them, but uh, high conflict personalities are historically more difficult to mediate with than non-high conflict personalities. So that might be one of the things I would ask is like, how long have you been mediating? You know, how many cases have you mediated? Because if they've mediated a large number, they're going to have automatically, you know, had some high conflict personalities in there. And then I would want to know, you know, do you, what do you know about high conflict personalities? Have you mediated with high conflict personalities in the past? And what you know, do you have relatively good success rate with that? When Thomas and I co-mediated, we we had essentially 95% uh, about, you know, settlement um, rate. We rarely had one fall out. I've only done about a half a dozen mediations by myself since Thomas passed and all of those have settled. Nobody has fallen out. So I technically have 100% uh, success rate by myself currently. But the the chances of mediation being successful is very, very high. And so I think you just want to be careful that you're not I know mediators that are essentially paperwork, people that know how to do the paperwork and they don't really know a lot about the psychology of mediation and negotiation with a high conflict personality. And so a lot of times you'll go in and their agenda is just get the agreement. They don't really understand the nuances of how to bring that person into the realm of agreement. Okay. That is very, very important. But like I said, the flip side is what have you got to lose, so to speak? Nothing, really. Um, Because, you know, I see people say, well, we're not in agreement on anything, so we can't mediate. Well, really? Then you're like all the other divorcing people. If everybody was in agreement, you wouldn't need mediators. And that's the other thing I hear people say, we're in 100% agreement, we don't need a mediator. Well, actually, a mediator's job as much as anything else is to educate you and make sure that you understand the consequences or the 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 potential consequences of different choices in your settlement negotiation. So, you know, if if you agree that one party's keeping the house, you might go into mediation and find out, oh, okay, well, there's tax issues with this and there's this and there's that. And so now that I know all that information, okay, well, well now I'm I don't think I want to keep the house or I'm not agreeing for the person to keep the house or whatever. 
Whereas if you hadn't had that education, you might have agreed to that and then find out down the road that that was a, you know, multi-thousand dollar mistake, right? So you want to make sure that you have somebody that's that seasoned that can guide you through some of those decisions from not only the practical legal side, but also on the emotional side and the part of negotiating with a narcissistic personality, okay? But my overall word to you is yes, you can mediate with a narcissist. It can be successful. And it's one of the easiest ways to get your case over and done because the courtroom becomes almost like a stage, right? And they're very, um, you know, they have a, a superiority complex, right? And they, they want people to think well of them and they, they're very charismatic and all these things. And so a lot of times the courtroom is the perfect stage for that. And with mediation, there's not all these eyeballs. There's not all this attention. There's just one-on-one -on -one with a mediator. And they are worried about what that other person thinks of them usually because, again, they, they have low self-esteem and they want that other person to like them or think highly of them a lot of the times. Not every narcissist is like that, but a lot of them. And so that can work to your advantage in that kind of intimate setting. And you may actually be able to come out of that session with a mediated agreement. I do coach a lot of people who are dealing with mediation, with negotiation with their narcissist, um, you know, with, with prepping for mediation and all of that kind of thing. So it can be very advantageous to get some third party input going into mediation just to help you think through and know what to expect and all that kind of thing. So if you'd like to learn more about my services, you can go to divorceuniversityonline.com forward slash VIP dash coaching. There's a link on that page. You can book a time to speak with a member of my staff and learn how I might be able to further support you on your journey. See you guys next time.